It's great to hear Glen Bryan man Tom Ryan get such an honourable mention at the Bloody Sunday ceremony in Croke Park. The Oil Gate Glen Bryan GA Club had planned a commemoration and unveiling a plaque in proud memory of Tom. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 put that on hold, as we heard from Sean Cork, who spoke glowingly about uh, this very special tribute. Uh, Tom Ryan's nephew, Alex Ryan, who died last year, was a member of the Oil Gate Glen Bryan panel winners of 1959, the Intermediate Hurling Championship. Babs Keating Tipperary, who had All-Ireland victories as a hurler and a manager, according to Alan, is a grandnephew of Tom Ryan and Tom Ryan's name is remembered with pride 100 years after he was shot. Thanks for all the information there. So if you're into folklore, you'll enjoy my next piece as well because I'm joined by well-known folklorist Michael Fortune, whom I haven't spoken to in a while. Uh, good afternoon to you, Michael. How are you? I'm good, Alan. Yeah, I was great. And it was great to see Tipperary win yesterday too, wasn't it? After it, I was shouting for him. <laughs> well, well, it, it was, unless you're from Cork, then it wasn't so <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It wasn't Ireland so was, great. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but yeah. Do you think was they were they young, inspired by the jerseys, Michael? Were they the special jerseys or inspired by the tradition? Yeah, yeah I think there's something deep down that sometimes we don't know what's there. Sometimes it drives us and things like that would drive you. Um, it was a kind of a very, I think it was a very proud moment, even looking on Saturday night, looking at the footage of, of it, you know. I think the GAA did a great job to handle it really well um, and didn't shy away from the truth of it either which was great to see you know all right, Michael, you're now going to uh, delve deep into the archives again. You've come up with dressers, and you and I had a chat. In fact, I spoke to Alice Taylor about this as well many moons ago, so it's not the first time I've discussed dressers. These are the dressers in the kitchen. Yeah, come here to me. I'm... I'm I grew up with a dresser up in Ballygarden, the house in Granny's house, and it was always there in the house with us when we were when I lived there for the first five years of my life. And then I would have been documenting over the years. I did an exhibition of the Art Centre in Wexford back in 2004 or five on dressers and the domestic space, how people decorate their homes. And then in 2015, I went and worked with five different counties, local authorities. Wexford was one of them. And the National Museum up in Mayo and for folk department down in Cork. And we went around documenting dressers in people's homes. But the, again, it's like Alice was talking to you about, with the stories, why people were connected to them. What, what was the deeper connection with the dresser, you know, as a practical piece of furniture, but also as something that was, again, that, you know, you held on to memories of your, you know, you're your, your reminded of your grandmother, your grandfather, the kitchen at home, what was held on it. So I, I documented, we had, we had a lovely exhibition there in, in the, the windows of the opera, uh, of the library, Wexford Library for the Opera Festival in 2000 and for the part of the fringe there, 2018, or 17 or 18, 17. And uh, I have all these photographs on a hard drive here on the computer, about 150 photographs of dressers. And for the last couple of years, I said, what am I going to do with them? And it was time with the idea of a book. And then I had the idea, funny, I kept noticing beside loads of dressers was calendars. So I said, I'm going to turn them into a calendar. So what I've done is since September, been just been designing away, beavering away, and pu- I, I selected, uh, there's 12 altogether per month, uh, dressers from the from five counties. The most, the most there's, there's, there's actually four from Wexford now, to be fair. Yes. Um, and there's stories behind them and, and produce this calendar. Can so you tell us one or two stories behind them? Because I, I'm told that these dressers have marvellous stories. Again, referring to the chat with Alice and now talking to you about them. The significance of the dresser. It was it a focal point of most people's kitchens in those days, Michael? Abs- completely. Ab- abs- absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely. I suppose we're talking late 1800s it started to become popular. Um, one of the things that struck me, really, really struck me, actually, come here to me, one of the things that struck me more than any other county was the male connection to the dresser in Wexford. Every walk of life in Wexford had a dresser from a farm labourer to a small farmer to a big farmer to the landed gentry they all had a dresser and you go look back at the the, 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 the grannies of the two up to down council house whatever in the cottage they had a dresser built into them so it went right up to right up through every, every, every crossover and I found men in Wexford were the, were really surprised me you know you'd be expecting the women to hang on to these things because they were shrines that were, rep- they were, they were, they were a kitchen but a lot, a lot of men hung on to them because they reminded of their mothers and their grandmothers um, and lads would have them out in the sheds and even want to be the sheds would be they'd still be looking after them you know um, one thing which was common was the, the um, made for we- made as wedding presents that was like I've, I've come across that from anything from the 1800s to 1930s 1940s so um, a man would make the, one of these for his, for, his, for his wife right um, yeah and that's really that really struck me and, and, one the, go- and the different styles of them then because I'm looking uh, at some of the pictures of, of, uh, of what you've sent me this morning I've seen three of them and they're all different colours and they're practically the same style but slight differences in them some seem to be wider 
Yeah, there was gorgeous Wexford styles. There was one style up around Marshallstown. There was a, a moment called Stella Burn. It was the, normally you have two drawers, but this had a third drawer, a little middle drawer for cutlery. Um, and she said she she got it down to the month and date, the year where it was where it was made in the house. And I went travelling around that around that area, around Kiltealy, up around that part, and I came across three more identical made by the same family. Um, they were made by um, oh, were the, were the, uh, oh, were two two brothers out out near out near out near Marshallstown. They made those. Um, the one was in Mick, Mick O'Sullivan's dresser up in Camolan as well, and on a gorgeous one, just a lovely photograph of Mick sitting beside it. And again, that was made by um, I was made by a man up near Carnew made, made, made that. Stella's one. I'm actually looking here. I'm flicking through the things here as I'm talking to you. Stella's was made by two O'Neill brothers from Ballydaw and Marshallstown around 1928. Um, um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out as well. Yeah. And you I can, can see. Like, I, I have a picture of Stella's one here in yeah. front of me. It looks lovely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mick Sullivan was made by a man called John John O'Toole up in Drummond in Carnew. Um and his is lovely. He's got a little an extra little row, a little shelf and a little support in it. Um but they're come here to me, they're just they're they're what I think once a house has them They'll never get rid of them, you know. Or, or now, there's, I see a lot of people want, wanting to get them again. There's a huge market in them, in, in them again. Um, like classic stuff, people kind of got rid of them in the 70s and 80s, and then they were kind of like, Jane, gosh, that wasn't wasn't a great idea, you know. Um, but there's a, there, I, I, I think there's a market, there's a, bit, there's a market in, in an interest in the dressers, but there's certainly a market in the calendars because we we had to go. We were we're on a third reprint now at this stage, we, yeah. oh, so which is which is which is which we, which is beyond you know we weren't expecting it at all. Okay, can I ask uh, you to flesh out a comment on the uh, uh, on the press release. Dressers mm-hmm. are evocative and they prompt memories. So you have been on a bit of a journey. Share some more of the memories with me, Michael. God, Alan, um, memories with the dressers. Like, come here. Like even my like one of the things which drove me to do this was my own grandmother. She passed away in two thousand and fifteen. And one of the things she said, now this was, she got sick, she was 102, turned 103 in that February. She, um, she lived in a two up to down house, so she was getting upstairs completely independent by herself, right? But when the, a nurse came out to say to her, so you're going to have to move this, maybe a bed downstairs and move the dresser out of the kitchen and move that. And she said, like, I, I'll do a beef, I, I'm going to do that. She says, no one's touching me dresser, right? And no one touched her dresser. Her dresser was left there. And she made a decision. They said that dresser was so important to her. She made a decision and she went off and she she, she, she died a couple of months later. So I'd say that that was one of the things, you know, she, but this didn't. This would not move, you know. Um, I find as well, when I go into people's houses, I find that they're almost become shrines that you'll find memory cards. You'll find maybe the, the, the bike clips that, that someone's own grandfather would have. You might even find a part of a Honda 50 hanging on it. You'll find a cup or a mug or a jug or something. You'll find on the backs of the doors, you'll find recipes written, you know, recipes that you can still actually make something out of, that, you know, it could be a, a, a fruit cake or it could be a Christmas cake written on the back of the door of a dresser. You'll find, you know, people will find, one woman had a, a, a mouse, just, everyone used to keep the flour and all the, 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 those kind of things down at the bottom of the dresser and sure it'd be a great place for a mouse to come in during the middle of the winter. So a woman will show me her father back in 1940, got a lid of a jam pot lid and bet it, made it flat and put a little hole in it and covered up the hole to stop the mouse coming in to eat in the flour. So all these things, and no matter where you go, you, you get those stories, you know, or someone went at it with a hammer one yes. day and took a, a lump off it or broke a handle off it. Um, but one thing I did notice, I noticed with Granny, I looked at the photograph, I found a photograph from the 1970s and the photograph from the 1970s she was actually using it as a kitchen, in the kitchen it was actually practical, mm-hmm. but by the time she died, and this is what happened as well, it became like almost geez, and some, <laughs> you know, it just became a, um, a place where souvenirs so someone came back from England, grandchild came back from yeah. England or from Dublin and brought back a cup or a mug or something and left it on it. So they weren't being used, but it became they became something else. They became these shrines, these places that, again, as you were saying, just held these memories, held all these memories. You know, are they um, worth any money, Michael? Somebody wants to know. Are they worth money if you have one in good condition? <laughs> just, I'm sure they are. You know, to be fair, I, I don't know. I I'm after getting phone calls from yeah from people asking me where can you get them. I don't know. I think they're they're out there still. I'm sure the antique dealers in Wexford might have them. But sure, God, I'm, I wouldn't say get too much change of five hundred euros now for one or a thousand euros for one. I'd say. Yeah. Um, I, and, I, and the I, timber base, what timber is used? in it? Here, come here to me. One thing I found in us, we found we use very cheap whatever whatever people had. Uh, some people you'll get really fine ones. Like I remember recording out to Joe Ryan down below there in Ross Birkin and in, in, in Kenny the other side of Ross, and she'd one out made of a gorgeous tree that was felled in the garden. While well, you go to someone else's house and it's literally cheap pine, and but basically that's why we layered paint on the top of it. That's why you had them so so colourful to get rid of it. You know, just to cover up the, the cheaper yeah. wood. You find you come across when you go looking as well. You'll find bits of old uh, tay chests. You'll find bits of old crates. 
bits of doors or writing on them still, the lad will have a bit, he'll find a bit, and I shall use that. Now, nowadays we can go to Woody's or everyone to go to and buy them, lent of wood or bulgers or whatever it is, but yeah. no, but, uh, yeah. so, yeah, so that's, that's why the, but th- those styles are lovely, Alan, you'll see, you'll see a Mayo style, you'll see a Wexford style, you'll see little peculiar things, you know, right. um, yeah. but anyway, it's, 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 they're lovely, I, I, I love them, that's why, why I did this, you know. Okay, uh, and if people want to access the calendar, as you say, you're onto the third print already, is it hard to get one? Because I'm sure it'll be a lovely Christmas gift for somebody. Yeah, um, the Arara, we're having a new batch arriving on Wednesday. We've got a, about 60 left now as it is today. You can mm. order them through the dresserproject.ie, the dresserproject.ie, so we're taking credit card and PayPal payments there, or mm. postal order a check. But also Easton's now, Easton's in Enniscorthy, and the Book Centre in Wexford, they got a stock of they them on Friday from us. Yeah. So there as well, you can call, call, uh, call in either. Are you still looking for for more dressers? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh sure, James. When, when do you stop, Alan? Uh, no, there's no stopping to it. Like, whenever this whole thing settles and we get back to some kind of other normality absolutely but people can email me email me or send me a message of a dresser because you know I, I even shared I have the Facebook page and I'd put up a photograph of one like maybe even it's not one that's not in the calendar, but people have seen them and love hearing the stories about them. Um, so absolutely, and especially if we can, have, if you have a story behind it, that's what's magic. Where you got it from? Who made it? That, that's what makes it. Great to talk to you. We're going to take uh, a, a bit of a tune, head to a commercial break, and link up with Neil Hughes. But always good to talk to you. And of course, we'll chat with you again coming up to the festive time of the year because I love your little stories. And we'll we'll talk to you just before Christmas, Michael. Brilliant. Thanks, a million, Alan. Thanks for having Not me. Not at all. Pleasure, Michael Fortune, there, local folklorist and historian, talking about dressers. Have you a story to share about a dresser? Let us know. Oh five three nine one four five two double two.